When you arrive at graduate school to study cosmology, the science of the universe, you are about to learn something called the Standard Model of Cosmology. The Standard Model of Cosmology is the story of the evolution of the cosmos, written in the language of mathematical physics. It starts a tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang and follows the cosmos up to the current moment. Thousands of scientists have contributed to this story, going all the way back to Albert Einstein himself. Our standard model of cosmology, including the Big Bang, cosmic inflation, the formation of cosmic structure and dark matter and dark energy, is all built upon the basic foundation of the expanding universe. But, how great that model is, there is always a number of challenges to it. Theoretical and observational challenges to the standard model of cosmology, such as the cosmological constant problem, and tensions between cosmological model parameters inferred from different observations, motivate the development and search of new physics. When the James Webb Space Telescope was launched, it sparked a new era in astronomy. It has provided us with a groundbreaking new view of the cosmos, a view the world has never seen before. These images from the James Webb Space Telescope, including the deepest infrared view of our universe that has ever been taken, show us how Webb will help to uncover the answers to questions we don't even know yet to ask. Questions that will help us better understand our universe and humanity's place within it. And in a shocking new study that's recently gotten some publicity, a startling statement argues that the expanding universe can be transformed away by manipulating the equations of general relativity. In that scenario, the observed cosmic expansion would merely be a mirage. But does this stand up to the science we already know? Or is it mere mathematical tricks that the observations we already have are ruled out? The answer will be exposed in today's episode of Eyes 200M. Back in the early part of the 20th century, two breakthrough pieces of observational evidence laid the foundation for the notion of the expanding universe. First, astronomer Vesto Slipher had been observing a variety of nebula in the sky, leveraging a novel technique, at the time, known as spectroscopy. By breaking up the light from these objects into their various wavelengths, Slipher noted that many of them had the same spectral lines we were familiar with from the known elements, but were systematically shifted, like something had stretched them to longer wavelengths. One possible explanation at the time was that of a Doppler shift, as though these objects were moving away from us. Second, starting in 1923, Edwin Hubble, with his assistant Milton Humason, began, quite by accident, identifying individual stars in these spiral and elliptical nebula. Originally seeking to observe novae, Hubble realized that some of these flares were actually periodic, brightening and faintening variable stars. By knowing the nature of these objects, and observing how bright they appear, the distance to them could be determined. Lo and behold, when you combine these two pieces of information, a new picture emerged. One where, on average, the farther away a galaxy was from us, the greater its light appeared to be shifted toward the redder, longer wavelength part of the spectrum. If this discovery had been made before Einstein's general relativity had come along, perhaps we would have resorted to a number of alternative explanations for why this was occurring. Perhaps there was some sort of lossy medium in space as light traveled through it, causing the light to lose energy as it propagated through the universe. Perhaps there was some sort of intergalactic matter present, extinguishing the light, particularly at shorter wavelengths. Or perhaps these galaxies were all closer together in the past, and the ones that moved faster relative to each other now wound up farther away, as higher speeds over time led to greater distances. But that wasn't the order of events, at least as far as our understanding of physics was concerned. We had already confirmed the predictions of general relativity 
in spectacular fashion during the total solar eclipse of 1919 and had already realized that space and time were not absolute quantities in our universe, but were woven together into the fabric of space-time. Putting all these things together meant that once we realized that the universe was filled with matter and other forms of energy all throughout it, we couldn't have a static and stable universe. The universe, instead, must be either expanding or contracting. The observations pretty clearly indicated that it was expansion, not contraction, that was occurring, as is often the case in physics, when the equations reveal that there are multiple possible solutions, you have to look at the actual universe itself to pick out which solution corresponds to your physical reality. Although in theory, the universe could have been either expanding or contracting, expansion is what it turns out it's actually doing. There are two common analogies we use to make physical sense of the expanding universe although each one has its limitations. One is to treat the universe as a balloon, and specifically as a balloon with coins glued or otherwise affixed onto its surface. The expanding universe then is like inflating or blowing up this balloon, and the coins on the surface of the balloon are analogous to the galaxies all throughout space. If you yourself are living in a galaxy inside one of these coins, then, as the universe expands, you'll see all the coins moving away from one another. The coins nearby you recede relatively slowly. The coins farther away appear to recede more and more quickly. It isn't that the coins are moving relative to the fabric of space, but rather the expansion of space drives them farther and farther apart with time. But this analogy has its flaws, for certain, the problem is that a balloon's surface is only two-dimensional, while our universe is three-dimensional. A balloon inflates because someone or something, usually a human, is blowing air into it in an extra spatial dimension that is unknown to inhabitants on the balloon's surface. And the balloon, indeed, is expanding into that extra third dimension. Whereas, in our universe, we have no evidence indicating the presence of a fourth or higher extraspatial dimension. You have to restrict yourself to simply thinking about the surface of the balloon, and you must ignore the inside of the balloon or the forces that actually cause it to inflate. A slightly better analogy, therefore, is to consider a fully three-dimensional object that expands, like a ball of raisin bread dough, i.e. bread dough with raisins distributed all throughout it. As the dough leavens, it expands, but the raisins within it don't. The raisins simply move farther away from one another in all three dimensions. If you're within a raisin, you see nearby raisins recede slowly. Intermediate distance raisins receding more rapidly, and the most distant raisins receding most quickly of all. Even though the raisins are actually stationary relative to the expanding dough. If the dough were transparent, it would behave like the fabric of space, while the raisins behave like individual gravities within the expanding universe. This analogy is a little bit better because it deals with the correct number of dimensions and doesn't rely on the presence of any dimensions that are extra nor does it rely on an additional external impetus to blow up or expand this universe. However, there are still a few flaws, such as there's a limit to how much the dough can expand, governed by biochemical reactions of yeast cells and how they convert sugars into alcohols and gas, or the dough itself changes its properties as it expands, becoming more rarefied and lower mass density, and the dough still expands into something, into the air or empty space surrounding it at its boundary. It's the last point about the dough expanding into something that provides the greatest difficulty in making an analogy with the expanding universe. Whereas the dough is an object that's embedded within a larger reality, the full scope of three-dimensional space, the universe itself is simply all there is. 
or at the very least, all that there needs to be. One way to overcome this difficulty is to imagine, instead of a ball of dough embedded with raisins in our three-dimensional universe, is to imagine a three-dimensional universe that is entirely filled with this raisin-embedded dough. We have every reason to think that our observable universe, whose cosmic horizon is set by a combination of the expansion rate, the speed of light, and the amount of time that's elapsed since the Big Bang, only represents a small fraction of a larger, more complete, unobservable universe. The amount that we can see and access has increased over time and will continue to do so as light that was emitted long ago, light that's already on its way to us, will eventually arrive for the first time despite the continued expansion of space. Given enough time, more than double the present volume of universe will eventually become visible to us. And it's possible, although no one is certain, that this unobservable universe may be truly infinite in extent. It wouldn't make sense, if this were so, to ask what's it expanding into because it's already infinite, covering every cubic inch of space imaginable. Think of the following questions. What's infinity plus infinity? It's still infinity. What do you get if you double, triple, or quadruple infinity? It's still infinity. And what happens if you multiply infinity by infinity, even if you do it in multiple dimensions? The answer, you still get infinity. That's what the expanding universe is like if it's truly infinite. And that's something that even many non-physicists or non-mathematicians can see for themselves. However, that picture might be broken as a potentially controversial new study suggests that the expansion of the universe could be a mirage. This rethinking of the cosmos also suggests solutions for the puzzles of dark energy and dark matter which scientists believe account for around 95% of the universe's total energy and matter but remain shrouded in mystery. The novel new approach is detailed in a paper published June 2nd in the journal Classical and Quantum Gravity by University of Geneva professor and theoretical physicist Lucas Lombreiser. Scientists know the universe is expanding because of redshift, the stretching of light's wavelength towards the redder end of the spectrum as the object emitting it moves away from us. Distant galaxies have a higher redshift than those nearer to us, suggesting those galaxies are moving even further from Earth. More recently, scientists have found evidence that the universe's expansion isn't fixed, but is actually accelerating faster and faster. This accelerating expansion is captured by a term known as the cosmological constant, or lambda. The cosmological constant has been a headache for cosmologists because predictions of its value made by particle physics differ from actual observations by 120 orders of magnitude. The cosmological constant has therefore been described as the worst prediction in the history of physics. Cosmologists often try to resolve the discrepancy between the different values of lambda by proposing new particles or physical forces, but Lucas Lombreiser tackles it by reconceptualizing what's already there. In this work, we put a new pair of glasses to look at the cosmos on, and its unsolved puzzles by performing a mathematical transformation of the physical laws that govern it, Lombreiser said. In Lombreiser's mathematical interpretation, the universe isn't expanding, but is flat and static, as Einstein once believed. The effects we observe that point to expansion are instead explained by the evolution of the masses of particles, such as protons and electrons, over time. In this picture, these particles arise from a field that permeates space-time. The cosmological constant is set by the field's mass, and because this field fluctuates, the masses of the particles it gives birth to also fluctuate. The cosmological constant still varies with time, but in this model that variation is due to changing particle mass over time, not the expansion of the universe. In the model, 
These field fluctuations result in larger redshifts for distant galaxy clusters than traditional cosmological models predict. And so, the cosmological constant remains true to the model's predictions. I wasn't surprised that the cosmological constant problem simply seems to disappear in this new perspective on the cosmos, Lumbreiser said. Lumbreiser's new framework also tackles some of cosmology's other pressing problems, including the nature of dark matter. This invisible matter outnumbers ordinary matter particles by a ratio of 5 to 1, but remains mysterious because it doesn't interact with light. Lumbreiser suggested that fluctuations in the field could also behave like a so-called axion field, with axions being hypothetical particles that are one of the suggested candidates for dark matter. These fluctuations could also do away with dark energy, the hypothetical force stretching the fabric of space and thus driving galaxies apart faster and faster. In this model, the effect of dark energy, according to Lumbreiser, would be explained by particle masses taking a different evolutionary path at later times in the universe. In this picture, there is, in principle, no need for dark energy, Lumbreiser added. Postdoctoral researcher at the University ECCI Bogota, Colombia, Luzangela Garcia, was impressed with Lumbreiser's new interpretation and how many problems it resolves. He said, the paper is pretty interesting and it provides an unusual outcome for multiple problems in cosmology. The theory provides an outlet for the current tensions in cosmology. However, Lumbreiser is not the first theoretical physicist who wants to disrupt textbook concepts of cosmology. One decade ago, Christoph Wetterich, a theoretical physicist at the University of Heidelberg, also produced a paper theorizing that the universe is not expanding but the mass of all its particles are instead increasing. His theory could potentially help examine the more problematic aspects of the Big Bang theory, such as the singularity present during the Big Bang. In his paper, A Universe Without Expansion, Wetterich discusses a cosmological model, quote, where the universe shrinks rather than expands during the radiation and matter-dominated periods, end quote. His paper was published on the ARXIV preprint server. In his abstract, he writes, Only dimensionless ratios as the distance between galaxies divided by the axum radius are observable. The cosmological increase of this ratio can also be attributed to shrinking atoms. In the 1920s, Astronomers such as Georges Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble analyzed the light emitted or absorbed by atoms, which appeared in a spectrum of characteristic colors or frequencies. When matter moved away, they discovered that galaxies exhibited a shift to the red, lower frequency part of the spectrum. After observing that most galaxies exhibit a red shift that became greater for most distant galaxies, they theorized that the universe was expanding. However, Wetterich highlights that this light emitted by atoms is also determined by masses of the elementary particles, and in particular, their electrons. If an atom were to grow in mass, the photons it emits would become more energetic because higher energies correspond to higher frequencies the emission and absorption frequencies would move towards the blue part of the spectrum. Conversely, if the particles were to become lighter, the frequencies would become redshifted. Because the speed of light is finite, when we look at distant galaxies, we are looking backwards in time, seeing them as they would have been when they emitted the light that we observe. If all masses were once lower and had been constantly increasing, the colors of old galaxies would look redshifted in comparison to current frequencies, and the amount of redshift would be proportionate to their distances from Earth. Thus, the redshift would make galaxies seem to be receding even if they were not. Work through the maths in this alternative interpretation of redshift, and all of cosmology looks very different. The universe still expands rapidly during a short-lived period known as inflation. But prior to inflation, according to Wetterich, 
the Big Bang no longer contains a singularity, where the density of the universe would be infinite. Instead, the Big Bang stretches out in the past over an essential infinite period of time, and the current cosmos could be static, or even beginning to contract. The idea may be plausible, but it comes with a big problem. It can't be tested. Regardless, as Wetterich argues, it could be a useful concept to use when considering different cosmological models. Well, that's all the information we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to tell us what you think of today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.